Shabbat Shalom, uh, Achim. I want to talk a little bit to to each one of you that are that, that listen in to the videos here. I have uh, been prayerfully, really deeply involved in the in, in the Book of Daniel uh, because there's so much there, and I would like to address my Israeli brethren, especially in these uh, next few videos that I'm going to put together. I'm going to continue to work with Daniel, Daniel uh, and to point out some very serious things that we're dealing with um, in, in Israel now with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, on the verge of making a covenant uh, with the Vatican. And some people may not realize just how serious this is. I, I have many friends that... Uh, that, that that have contacted me, you've emailed me, you've talked to me personally, and you've mentioned how that you feel that um, that the Antichrist doesn't have anything to do with the, the Vatican, and uh, some people believe that Obama is, and I respect the different opinions that are out there, but uh, please bear with me and also understand that I, I try to speak uh, directly to the children of Israel in these regard in this regards here, and uh, I, I want to share with my Israeli brothers and sisters, and uh, I will probably do a little bit of this in Hebrew on the next set of videos here. Um, when I say do some of this in Hebrew, actually reading some of the uh, Hebrew passages. But I would like, uh, let's just quickly look at uh, Daniel chapter 9. Uh, again, it's, it's, the, it's the very famous uh, uh, verses, Daniel uh, Tet. For my for my brothers and uh, Kafvav uh, is about where we want to look at here, and uh, and after sixty two weeks shall an anointed one be cut off, and none will be left uh, to him, and the people of a prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now remember that that's the prince that shall come that shall destroy uh, that will be of the people that destroys the city and the sanctuary. Uh, of course, we know that Rome destroyed the city and the sanctuary uh, back during Titus's siege in 70 uh, CE in the Common Era. And so, but anyway, but here's what's important here. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and during a half of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and offering to cease, which kind of makes it obvious that we would have a temple worship again if he makes the sacrifice and offering to cease. Um, but uh, again, he says, and he, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. Now, here's what gets a little interesting, and I'm just prayerfully looking at some of these things. Um, and I want to bring it to your attention uh, as, we, as I try to, and I'm asking uh, those of you, the, the Christian people as, especially, that you be in prayer for me uh, in bringing some of these scriptures out. That, that it might be a blessing, and, and especially um, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Michael Frund, who used to be uh, one of his cabinet ministers. Uh, I don't know if Michael watches these videos. I know Michael, but perhaps he may. Uh, I know there's other rabbis that watch these videos, but uh, I think it's important that we take a very serious look at the covenant that the Vatican is trying to do with Israel, because here's, a, here's some points I want to bring out to you uh, again, Daniel uh, Yod Aleph, or chapter 11 in this case here, uh, for, for the Christian people trying to follow along. Um, and let's see. Uh, let's begin probably around, uh, uh, oh gosh, how about uh, close to Lamed, uh, verse 20 here. But he shall stumble and fall, uh, not be found. Then there shall stand up one in his place who shall send an exactor of taxes throughout the glory of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, but not in anger uh, or in battle. And in his place shall stand up a vile person to whom the honor of the kingdom uh, has not been given. Now, the question is, uh, and I've looked at some of the commentaries on this here as the person that's the exactor of taxes. Um, and then uh, it speaks about, though, that he, the, uh, but within a few days he shall be destroyed. 
I'm going to get into that a little bit later with you. I want to come back to that, but probably not on this video here, because I'm wanting to point out some things for you guys to be thinking about. He says here, though, uh, in, in, in verse uh, 21 or 22 here, I'm sorry, uh, but he shall come in without difficulty and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, and the force of the flood shall be swept away before him, and he shall be broken, even the prince of the covenant. Now keep that in mind. This prince of the covenant is the prince that shall come, uh, that makes that covenant. So this cannot be talking about during the times of, of Alexandria, or, Alexandria or any of the, these guys here. This is speaking of the day that we're, that we're moving into now. Watch what it says here, though. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. That's the part that I find very interesting because the Vatican is really has been using the Palestinian people to be able to get their stronghold in Israel. It's been it's been the um, the catalyst, maybe you might say, uh, uh, this this behind this push. Uh, they're, they're they're using the Palestinian the Palestinian state uh, to be able to gain that leverage. As, as part of the covenant that they're trying to sign. And yet we also see that the covenant is to be made with many, speaking of the children of Israel that are, that are in the land there, uh, and, and there again, that expression that the covenant is made with many may have more to do with than just Israel as well. We may find that the United Nations may have a part in this because we know that the Vatican has a strong uh, uh, pull on, on them as well. So, but it's it's fascinating here, and I, and I think any of our leaders of Israel that watch this video, uh, we should really warn our leaders as well. But even though we know that the covenant will be made, it has to be made because the, the, it's already foretold that it will be made. But I believe that uh, that when the two witnesses come, they will they will. Uh, will tell us where we went wrong as a, as a people and how that the Romans were wrong. And then they will also bring the condemnation, the curses and the plagues they will bring down upon those that have made this covenant uh, against our people. Now, here, let's go on. Let's look at it again a little bit here. So he says here, and the force of the flood shall be swept away before him and shall be broken, even the prince of the covenant. After the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall be strong with a small people. He shall enter in without difficulty, even upon the fattest places of the province. And he uh, shall do that which his fathers have not done, or his father's fathers. Uh, now, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the popes are always considered fathers to begin with, and all the popes in the past have, will have never have amounted to as much as what this particular man will do. Uh, and whether or not it's the, the pontiff that is there now, uh, Pope Benedict, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, but, but we'll see. I, I can't say for sure. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, or his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them prey, spoil and riches, and he shall devise schemes against the strongholds, but only for a time. And there again, for my Jewish brethren, we have to keep in mind, in, in, in Revelation, uh, the Jewish writer John brings out about this covenant and talking about the two witnesses that come on the scene and then how that they're killed. And then, of course, this Antichrist spirit just really goes into a rage afterwards. Uh, and that's for the next three and a half years. So very serious uh, time that we're, that we're looking at as a people. Um, but only for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. Now that's where I believe the United Nations comes in. Uh, that's the army that he stirs up. That's, that's his power. That's what he's able to do to go against the king of the south. Uh, and I know that there's a lot, of, a lot believe that Egypt is that king of the south. I, I'm not sure myself. Maybe so, but I, I'm prayerfully looking at that as well. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with very great and a mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall devise schemes against him. For those uh, who eat his food shall destroy him, 
and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain, and both those kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for the end is yet to come at, that, at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be set against the holy covenant, and he shall work his will and return to his own land. And at the time appointed, he shall return to come towards the south, but it shall not be uh, at the latter time as it was at the former, for ships of Kittim shall come against him, therefore he shall lose heart and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. Now, keep in mind, this holy covenant is what I believe that they're calling the very covenant that they're trying to work out with Israel now. And that's where the Vatican is pushing not only for a Palestinian state, but they're also pushing to gain control over the holy sites of Israel. And in so doing, uh, this is where I believe that Israel is going to be given permission to build the holy temple. Uh, and, of course, the Vatican does have the artifacts, many of the artifacts, the, the ancient menorah is shown on the Ark of Titus as they carried it back into to Rome. So I believe that this is what we're going to see, is that they're going to they're gonna bring these items out, which is supposed to pretty much basically cause a revival amongst the Jewish people, believing that this is the hand of God. Uh, and, and you can only imagine, if you take the Vatican... And they, and they permit the, some of the holy uh, sacred emblems that were in the second temple to be returned to Israel for the building of the third temple. Uh, it would be just an incredible revival type spirit that would come amongst our people. But the problem is, you got to remember, God has warned us through the prophet Daniel that this is not of God. This is not of Hashem. Hashem is not in this particular, this movement here. Because the covenant is deceitful. Now let's watch what he says here. Um, so he says, And have indignation against the holy covenant, and do his will. He shall even return and have an understanding with those who forsake the holy covenant. An arm shall stand up on his part, and they shall profane... Uh, sanctuary and fortress and shall take away the daily sacrifice see that shows right there they may be supportive of a temple but in the midst of that week after the two witnesses are killed according to john and, and revelation then this this sacrifice will be stopped and so the, our building of our temple um, will not come to the past the way we think it is we, we have to keep in mind when ezekiel sees the temple of god it came down out from god out of heaven it's not from an earthly standpoint. But anyway, we'll get into this a little bit later. And I'm not against the third temple. Believe me, I'm not against the third temple. So, uh, And they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall set up the abomination that make, makes desolate, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be seduced by flatteries. You see, that that's the point. You know, there's so many of our people that are going to be seduced by this incredible, uh, it's just going to really look wonderful. But you know, our people, many of our people, would be seduced by the flatteries. Um, so let's see what he says here. Um, and shall profane the sanctuary. Okay, the fortress abomination makes desolate. All right, uh, I lost my spot here. Okay, but uh, continue on in verse uh, 32 here. But the people who know their God shall be strong and prevail, and they who understand among the people, keep that in mind, among the people uh, inst uh, instruct, m instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil some days. Uh, now when they shall fall, they shall receive a little help, but many shall join themselves to, to them with flatteries. So, we're finding that a lot of Israel is going to join up in this covenant, thinking that it's something of God, and it's not of God. Uh, but, but many shall join themselves uh, unto them with flatteries, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and refine and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is for a time appointed, and the king shall do accordingly to his will, and he shall exalt himself, 
magnify himself above every god and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that which is determined shall be done nor shall he regard the god of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any god for he shall magnify himself above all but in his place he shall honor the god of strongholds if that doesn't describe a, 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 a catholic priest to begin with uh, i mean you really think about it see he is it's, it's what's interesting says uh, he says here and he shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods Hashem himself shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that which is determined shall be done, nor shall he regard the God of his fathers. So he, he really is not even true to, to even good Catholic teaching where, you know, when I say good Catholic teaching, in other words, there have been a lot of maybe good Catholics down through the ages that did that really do believe in God, but he doesn't even acknowledge that. Uh, nor the desire of women... Well, Catholic Pope doesn't believe in having a wife, so there's your no desire of a woman. Nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all, but in his place he shall honor the God of strong. In other words, as it, the position that he has, he supposedly honors the God of Israel, for example. But he exalts himself above all that is called God. You have to remember, written on the, the triple crown of the Pope is written by Carius Filii which means instead of the Son of God. And if you ever take that those the, that word and 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 write it out by Carius Filii you end up with if you take the num numerology out of there, you end up with six hundred and sixty six. Take just the no, Roman numerals of that. Uh, of that particular phrase that's over the Catholic Pope, and it's got the number of 666. And the Bible says it's the number of a man. It's not the number of a people, it's the number of a man. So just something to think about. A little, little, little maybe off the subject there, but a little something to think about. Um, so anyway, so he says, Nor shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor, the, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all, but in his place he shall honor the God of strongholds. And a God whom his fathers did not know shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and costly things. He shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign God. Those whom he acknowledges he will magnify with honor, and he shall make them rulers over many and shall divide the land for a price." There you go. And we're going to kind of conclude it right there. He's going to divide the land for a price. And, you know, it just kind of reminds me of uh, Joel. When Joel speaks of the same thing, those that divide my land, I, I, I forget exactly the, the exact quote on that scripture, but I believe God says I'll divide theirs. So we're in a very serious hour. And there's a lot of things written in the book of Daniel that lets us know where we're at and what we're facing, what we're facing in, in, in this very uh, prophetic times that we're living in. And I really want to take time with you and talk to you sincerely about these things, uh, not just rush through it. But I wanted to give you just a little bit of what I'm uh, studying about right now. But I'd like to really tie these things in. I don't want to just take you in one book. I want to take you uh, from one particular book, like say Daniel is tied in with Zechariah, is tied in with Joel, Zephaniah is tied in with, uh, and for my Jewish brethren, let's look at what the prophets of, uh, of, the, of the Christian Bible had to say about these things, especially John. He talks quite a bit in depth about these things. Even Jesus himself, many things that he prophesied that would take place uh, that we're fixing to see. Uh, but anyway, be of good courage, be strong. Uh, we're, we're headed for some very, very difficult times, my brothers and my sisters as well. Very difficult times. Um, it's not going to be pretty. And, uh, you know, I know we look at the third temple as bringing peace. I know Gershon Solomon, my precious brother, uh, believes these things as well. And it will. It will. Uh, but I'm actually looking for the one that Hashem makes, th this third temple. Uh, the building of the third temple that we will have here, we will get to worship in that temple. 
Um, but unfortunately, this evil prince that shall come, he's going to put his nasty foot in that temple and profane it. So I believe God would accept our worship, but the thing is, it's, uh, it's going to be really tough, very difficult times. As, as a time of trouble has never been on the face of the earth is what our people will go through. And when I just shared with you about Daniel and how that many will join to the flatteries of this covenant, uh, there's a lot of Jewish people in Israel right now that are for a two-state solution as well, hoping that it will bring peace. It will not bring peace. It's not going to. And the Palestinians are really not the, you know, we, we can say it's an enemy because of the suicide bombers, but we've got to remember not all the Palestinians are like that. Uh, where the problem is, is this Vatican and what the Vatican's doing. That's where the trouble comes down. And they're using Palestinians. Unfortunately, the Palestinian people, I believe, just do not realize that they're being used as a pawn of the devil. And it's going to cause many of our own people to fall for this covenant as well. Uh, anyway, God bless you. I, I, I pray that you'll be watchful, awake. Soon, for the Christians, there will be a rapture, which there will be many Jews that will go in that rapture as well. I say many, it's a little small number to begin with, uh, even amongst the Christian people. Many, many Christians will be left behind. And that's a tough thing, I'm sure, for you guys to think of. We see this Left Behind series movies. Um, they go up, and their clothes are left behind. I always caught that. I thought it was kind of strange, but oh well. Uh, but it's not. I don't think it's going to be quite like that. I do believe there will be a resurrection. I believe there's going to be a rapture. Um, but I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of Christians, though, that did not get the baptism of the Holy Spirit on their soul looking for signs, um, you know, sensations or whatever. Look for a life change. That's what you look for. God bless you until we get to talk again. Hopefully soon.